these guys reach out and say, hey, do you want to play? We had no clue what it was. It was a disease that I had heard of Lou Gehrig's disease, but never knew what it was. I don't know what ALS, I've heard it several times, but I, I can't tell you exactly what it is. But I'm certainly familiar enough with Lou Gehrig's disease. Amyotropic lateral sclerosis. It's a motor neuron disease and eventually, eventually affects all your voluntary muscles. It's a type of disease that um, makes you not walk and it kind of gunks up your muscles and makes it, makes it hard for you to breathe. This particular disease just ravages your body. The biggest effect for my dad was that it affected his lungs so he couldn't, you know, he couldn't breathe. It would take, talking was an effort, walking was an effort, you know, he had no energy because he couldn't get the air that he needed. You try to live your life except that all of a sudden now you can't do the things that you used to be able to do. It's like the only thing that's left is your mind and your vision and the rest of your body dies slowly. You know, my father had had ALS and he had passed away from that in 97. So, you know, ever since then it was something that, it was always kind of on the back of my mind. It's something that, you know, I would never want, I would never want to experience. I keep telling myself it could be something worse, but I haven't come up with anything yet. If you have something worse, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears. I'm thinking to get ALS somehow Something made your legs fail you. In the normal world, you know, it got hard to walk. So the, the normal instinct is to keep working it and try, you know, you fall down, and get back up. But in ALS, it doesn't get better. When you start falling down, you got to find a different way to walk. I mean, when I was first diagnosed, I thought, you know, um, this has to be a mistake. My, my son is three. And I'm sitting there saying, Lou Gehrig's disease. Either he's telling me I'm going to be playing ball for the Yankees or I'm going to die. I had cancer 10 years ago. And I will say, though, ALS is a lot scarier than cancer. After he was diagnosed, it was Another doctor told me that he probably had post-traumatic stress just from the diagnosis because he understood just how difficult the diagnosis was. In cancer, you know, you find out you're in a fight. With ALS, you find out you just lost the fight. Shortly after we heard about Joe, um, I knew that I could not stay in Detroit, that um, as family, uh, it is important to be back together. A person with ALS may feel prisoner to their own body. I can't, I can't imagine what that is like to be in your mind, of your mind, but your body won't cooperate. That's got to be incredibly frustrating. Well, the most frustrated I get is not being able to mother my daughter and parent her. I don't like to see my mom dying like this. And it makes her die um, quicker than normally. You know, I can't run and play, I can't ride bikes, I can't do any of those things. And now I can't even go upstairs to her bedroom. It, that sucks. I really thought when I had this child I was going to have all this time. and. All this energy, we were going to do all these great things, and it really blows that I can't do those things with her. Sometimes it's hard to ask for help when, up until this happened, I was the person I would help other people. Then as we deteriorate, we need more and more care. And so we need more and more help for the families lifting him for every single need that he had and then 
you know, uh, helping him put on his BiPAP mask and um, everything, just every single need that he had. It just felt like it kept getting worse and worse, and we all just had to, and him included, dig deeper just to get to and through the next day. At first, I just did not want to be seen using a cane or anything like that. And I remember I even had them order a work cart to put things on. I would push the cart so people wouldn't have to see me with the cane that I had. I would say that it does to the body what it doesn't do to the mind. So a person with ALS may be physically incapacitated, but it does not affect how you think. In the world I live in, I'm really not doing that badly. I'm not progressing as quickly as some people do, but it's still not looking at the life I had been looking forward to. This isn't the retirement I had been looking forward to.